Hello, I'm Sys Tim of the Sustainer Store, and in this video, we're going to review a couple methods for storing your sustainers. I've got four storage methods to talk through. It'll be the sustainer stack, the shelf, the Sys AZ, and the sustainer 3 rail. Let me start off by saying you don't need to pick a single method for your workshop or work van. You may find that you want to employ all of these. In some ways, it's like data. You may keep a file on your computer desktop because you actively use it and you access it frequently. Other documents you may keep in My Documents or up in the cloud and you don't mind a couple extra clicks to get to it. We can apply that same idea to how we store our tools and our sustainers within our workshop and our work van. The first method, the sustainer stack, everyone uses by default because after you get two or more sustainers, what do you do? You stack them up. The sustainers are known for being able to stack easily. Furthermore, you have the advantages with the T-Lock where you can access a sustainer in the middle of the stack. Continuing with our data analogy, there is a sequential aspect to sustainers that are in a stack. You may have to remove the top sustainer then the next to top sustainer in order to get to where you want. But there is that little bit of random access to the sustainer, being able to open them up in the middle. But this idea breaks down. If your sustainer stack gets too tall or you've got some top heavy sustainers and you're trying to get to the bottom one, doing that random access or opening the sustainer in the middle of the stack becomes a bit more difficult. When you are active on a project, requiring a lot of tools and materials at hand, you can find yourself shuffling sustainers frequently, placing them on your bench and across your floor, taking up valuable space. Let's talk about shelves. This is the next most common method for storing sustainers. One can use existing shop or van infrastructure, or make a custom cabinet or addition to a workbench. Often, one uses plywood for such applications, usually in the half inch or three quarter inch. They can use this to make the carcass and the shelves. Here on the modular workbench by Benchmaker Pro, there's an open space for doing a small stack of sustainer. I've heard from customers that have made shelves that are two sustainers deep as they wanted to group like jobs together, such as their nail guns and hold it all in one common place. You can also make the space between shelves taller to combine both the stack and the shelf method. If you want to gain access to the contents of a sustainer, you need to pull the sustainer out from the shelf and place it on a work surface. The Sys AZ is a sliding drawer for the sustainers. This drawer fits the Classic, the T-Lock, and the Sustainer 3 m size sustainers. This drawer is often mounted in a plywood cabinet or on our modular workbench we are using extruded aluminum rails. The width needed for the Sys AZ drawer is 427 millimeters and the depth needed is at least 380 millimeters. You can find all this information in the instruction sheet that comes with the Sys AZ, or you can find it on our website. The Sys AZ drawer can fully extend. It rides on these rails with ball bearings. When the drawer is fully extended, you can open up the lid of the sustainer and gain complete access to the contents without removing the sustainer from the drawer. The drawers can be bought in single and five packs. And if you need a touch of security, you can purchase a lock that mounts on the front of the SysAZ drawer. The drawer method works great when you have a frequently accessed sustainer in your workshop. This could be a sustainer that holds joining materials such as dominoes or dowels, or a tool that you reach for often. The Sustainer 3 rail or Sys rail was introduced with a third generation of sustainers by Tanos. If you look closely at the side of a Sustainer 3, you will see a mating rail slot here molded into the Sustainer. This slot and rail system was designed with BOT, a world leader in mobile work storage. And so this method makes sense for work vans and trailers. Similar to the shelf method, a Sustainer that is stored with the rail needs to be fully pulled out and moved to a work surface in order to interact with its contents. The slot is found on the Sys 3M, the L, the double XL, as well as the organizers. And in fact, the Sys 3 rail also works with a Sys Cart RB. The Sys rail is made out of robust ABS, just like the sustainers. They are sold in pairs, a left and a right. And if you look closely at the molding of the Sys rail, you will see that they even molded in the dimensions of how wide the cabinet needs to be for the M and the L size. Of course, these dimensions and more information can be found in the card that comes with the Sys rail, or on our website, which I'll link to below. As you can see, the sustainer fits snugly into the rail and slides in. One needs to slightly lift up the sustainer in the front to pull it forward. 
This is a bit of like a locking mechanism to keep it from coming out when it is in a work van storage. You may have noticed, as some customers recently did, that the SIS rail is a little bit longer than the SIS 3 design. That's because this rail is based on BOT's Vario 3 system, which has some deeper accessories and is a more full-featured system. Here in the US, Sustainer Systems is recently selling the Module 3 design, which is just a little bit shorter, but they work very much the same. And I'm excited for this as I'm finding components of both the smart van system that we might be able to move into the workshop for making some awesome workshop furniture. Here is the SIS Tower, a custom designed shop furniture piece for demonstrating the SIS rail. You can see how I mixed a couple bot components with the SIS rail in the Sustainer 3 organizers. I have a bot shelf on the top and I have a bot pull out drawer on the bottom. I'll tell you more details about this in a future video. So now that we've reviewed the SIS AZ and the SIS rail, let's talk about just a couple quick tips. Of course, when you mount either of these systems, you're going to want to make sure that they're level within the cabinet. You can take the rails off of the SIS AZ, get those mounted and lined up, maybe using spacer between the rails, and then you can attach the drawer onto those rails. Similarly, when you're using the SIS rail, you can line up your bottom ones, then maybe use a spacer as you put in the ones above it. When you're spacing out your SIS rails, you're going to want to make sure you account for the feet that protrude out the bottom of the Sustainer 3. The SIS AZ drawer, you can put a label in it, just like you can on any of the other Sustainers. Let's say you're going to build a single cabinet where you want to mount both the SIS AZ drawer and SIS rails. You're only working with maybe Sustainer 3 M sizes. We'll build the cabinet to the SIS AZ dimension, then use six millimeter or quarter inch plywood on the inside of a rail so that it offsets just a little bit to the inside. And you're going to do this on both sides to get it to line up. I've offered an overview of four ways to store your sustainers, of which you can mix and combine these or create completely new ones. For inspiration on what you can do, look us up on Instagram, Pinterest, or subscribe to this YouTube channel. Leave a comment below if you have a particular method that you like to employ. Remember, sustainers offer a good foundation for how to build the work system that works for you. I'm Sis Tim of the Sustainer Store. Make it a great day.